let's try to link our project with the C standard library. The C standard library which we are going to use is newlib and newlib nano. Let's explore about the newlib. Newlib is a C standard library implementation intended for use on embedded systems and it is introduced by Cygnus Solutions, now Red Hat. Newlib is written as glibc replacement for embedded systems. It can be used with no OS systems, that is bare metal systems, or with a lightweight RTOS. Newlib ships with the new ARM toolchain installation as the default C standard library. We have already installed this GNU ARM toolchain on our systems. That means we have already installed the Newlib library. I will show you that in a moment. GLibc includes ISOC, POSIX, System5, and XPG interfaces. MicroLibc provides ISOC, POSIX, and System5 features, while Newlib provides only ISOC. That's the difference between Newlib, Micro, libc and glibc newlib comes with a less feature sets then how about newlib nano due to the increased feature set in newlib it has become too much bloated to use on the systems where the amount of memory is very much limited especially in the case of a low memory embedded systems to provide a C library with minimal memory footprint suited for use with microcontrollers, ARM introduced Newlib Nano, which is based on Newlib. Newlib Nano is again a reduced feature version of Newlib. For example, Newlib Nano doesn't support a uh, flow data type by default. For that, you have to send some extra compiler arguments. In this exercise, I will be using Newlib Nano. Let's locate the Newlib and Newlib Nano libraries. You have to go to the toolchain installation path, this path in your system, and here you will find a libc.a, that's the archive. This is a Newlib library, and this is Newlib Nano. Here you will also see a couple of other libraries like LB, RDI, mon.a these are used during semi-hosting these are semi-hosting library i'll talk about semi-hosting a little later and after that you also find a couple of spec files like nano.spec gnosis.spec pid.spec these are some spec files which you are going to use during linking stage of your project to make your application link to uh, these libraries. So I will show you that in a moment. Let's talk about some other things what we need to do for this project in order to link successfully with the C standard library. We should take care about low level system calls. The idea of Newlib is to implement the hardware independent parts of the standard C library and rely on a few low-level system calls that must be implemented with a target hardware in mind. That means Newlib doesn't provide low-level system calls which is going to operate on some of the hardware units of the microcontroller. You have to provide the low-level system calls. When you are using Newlib, you must implement the system calls appropriately to support devices, file system, and memory management. For example, let's say if your embedded application wants to use printf, we know that printf is a C standard library function. That standard library function is provided by the Newlib Nano or Newlib. Then Newlib calls the low level system call that is underscore write. Here, the underscore write is a low level system call that must be provided by you. What you do inside the write function depends on your hardware. You can write into the UART or you can write into the LCD or to the ITM FIFO or you can do whatever you want as per your board or target. What happens here is 
this is the kind of redirection. So the new lib redirects printf to the low level write function. Write function implemented here will receive all the strings which are formatted by the printf. You will receive the formatted string here from the new lib. And then you have to take a call where you are going to print that string, whether you are going to send that to the UART or LCD or something like that. That you have to provide. That's why here write is called as a stub or low level target specific system call. Like that, you have to provide a lot of system call implementation like write, read, SBRK. This is called by the new lib when the embedded application executes malloc or uh, dynamic memory management related APIs. Now we have to include all these system call implementation. Now what you have to do is I have attached a file with this lecture. File name is syscalls.c. I want you to download that file and place it in your workspace. This file contains the function definition of uh, some of the important system calls such as write, read, close, open, etc. This file doesn't contain complete implementation of all those uh, system calls. Remember that what I said before, implementing a system call depends on your target. This file contains just a function definition, just to build our project without any errors. Also, just open that file and uh, explore its contents. And in the next lecture, we are going to include that file in our build system and we are going to compile our project with the standard C library. I just copied syscalls.c into my workspace and now let me just open the command prompt here. First, open the make file. Here, let's create one more target. Let me call it as uh, syscalls.o and the dependency is syscalls.c. And after that, let's modify this target all syscalls.o. After that, let's modify this as well final.elf syscalls.o. After that, we want to link with newlib nano, isn't it? That's why we have to modify the linker flag. In the linker flag, you have to mention the nano lib specific spec file. Here, if you go to this folder, you will see a lot of spec files. Nano spec, gnosis specs. So gnosis specs will be used when you don't want to use any system calls. No system calls. Since we are using new lib nano, you have to pass this spec file to the linker. And if you are using semi hosting, then you should pass this spec file to the linker argument to the linker you have to pass the spec file like this double hyphen you have to use double hyphen spec is equal to nano dot specs you have to give exactly this name to this uh, linker argument this is a spec file this argument will link your project with newlib nano c standard library and also make sure that the linker argument no std lib should not be present at this stage because we are linking with the c standard library so if you have the linker argument no std lib then please remove that let me save this and exit go to the main.c in the main.c enable all print apps now we can enable the print apps let's save and exit and let's make it says unrecognized command line option this is because it has to be specs not spec 
let me fix that here it must be specs make clean and make compilation went well but there is a problem it says that this is actually CRT 0 that is C runtime there is a function in the C runtime called underscore start that function expects one global symbol called underscore underscore bss start and uh, bss end and also uh, there is one more symbol is missing that is end which is required by our syscalls file we have to fix these symbols that can be fixed through the linker script this error is just saying that you know some library file want you to implement these symbols that's it as this name indicates you have to mention the start of bss that's it and end of bss let's do that that's not a big deal let's go to the workspace and here open our linker script this is our linker script and this is the start of bss just create that symbol the missing symbol that is this one let's copy this paste here and is equal to you can equate that to this one after that next one is bss end copy paste here equal to this one that's correct let's go back make clean and make here you can see that there is one more error no problem let's resolve this to undefined reference to end so there is one more symbol missing in our linker script which is required by this system call which is there in syscalls.c this symbol helps the memory management function to locate the end of heap that's why in this symbol you have to mention the start of heap later memory management function will update this variable or symbol to understand whether more memory can be allocated or not the sbrk function in our system calls let me show you that function let's go to my workspace syscalls.c and at the end we have sbrk here is the symbol this symbol this symbol should come from the linker script that is heap end then heap end will be compared with stack pointer to understand whether it is no mem condition or successful memory location condition that is checked later that means you have to just mention the start of heap that's it the heap starts after bss section let's go back to our linker script we know that heap starts after the bss section that's why we can give that end here what you can do is you can just align the location counter align and after that end is equal to location counter that's it let's go back make now the build is successful let's run the object dump to see all the sections of our final elf file hyphen h final dot elf and here it is there are some weird sections this is because of linking to the standard library the standard library introduced lots of sections you can see that every function is considered as a sub text section we have to resolve all these into a single text section so we'll do that later all these are because of linking to the standard c library in the previous lecture we ran this command isn't it you can see that there are a lot of weird sections and you can see that the c library introduces every function as a separate text section 
at the end of the day what we can do is we can club all these separate text section of different functions into a common text section we can do that it's better to arrange like that arrange all a uh, separate ro data section into a common ro data section for that we have to edit our linker script file let's go to the linker script file and what i can do here is i can add one more entry dot text dot star if i do this then all such sections can be merged into one text section i do similarly for ro data as well for ro data also we can do something like that dot star after that for data section also you can do like that stop this is a wild card character let's build the project let's again run object dump and you can see that we reduced the number of sections but still there are some sections so these sections are related to the standard c library and for bss also we can do something like that let's go back and let's do dot bss dot stop that's it now you can see that uh, these two sections are pure code sections they can go into the text section isn't it you can see that vma and lma are same here because they are codes that's why you can merge these sections into a text section you can do that let's go to the linker script and after this line what i can do is star dot init and star dot finish this is not mandatory to merge with this section so you can just leave them like this no problem let's run let's check now you may be having one question that you know in the linker script we created only text data and bss how come linker created all these other sections that's because if there are any unmerged sections then linker will include those sections as it is in the output file that's why linker has introduced this section as it is that is found in the standard c library so now let's test our application before that we have to do one more thing we know that whenever the microcontroller resets the control first comes to the reset handler and after that we initialize the data section bss section and before calling main you have to call a function which initializes the c standard library and for this purpose you have to call underscore underscore libc underscore init underscore array this is a standard library function i mean it's a init function which initializes the c standard library after that you have to call main let's call this function go to startup file stm32 startup.c let's go to the reset handler here and here you should call that function libc init array let's give the prototype of that otherwise you will see compilation problems let's include the prototype of that void libc init array that's it now you can include couple of printf statements in your main.c anyway you have these printf statements here let's say i write one printf statement here here printf implementation of simple task scheduler 
Now the question is, how do you see this printf when the code is running? You can't see, isn't it? Because we don't have any output terminal or output device by which we can see this text message. When you call a printf, newlib calls write system call, which is there in syscalls.c underscore write. In the write, the formatted string is received at this pointer and length is received in this variable by using this pointer you can send the data to any output devices you want as i mentioned it could be uart or it could be itm54 or it could be lcd or something like that but currently we don't have any such devices that's why currently even though the control comes to the right it is just a dummy right we will not be able to see any printf messages that's fine our goal is to test the code with standard library our goal is not to test the printf working, but your code should be fine with standard C library. Code execution should not generate any uh, fault exceptions. Later, we can visualize the printf by using a semi hosting feature. Let me quit this project. Before testing this project, let me once again open the make file because still some more. Uh, linker arguments we have to provide what you should do now here is you should repeat these arguments with linker flags as well that's why what you should do is just copy this and paste here in the linker flags during linking also you should mention that because you are linking with a standard C library after that you have to mention this argument m float abi this specifies which floating point abi to use so the permissible values are soft soft fp and hard this is something to do with the execution of floating point instructions sometimes in the project we use a floating point related logic or we use floating point data types and floating point operations in that case you have a couple of choices you can either use the processor hardware floating point unit if supported or you can use a library functions to process floating point operations some processors support hardware floating point unit and some processors don't support for example in our case the arm cortex m4 processor it is called as arm cortex m4f where f stands for hardware floating point unit our processor supports hardware floating point unit but before using uh, that hardware floating point unit you have to enable it first otherwise you know trying to execute floating point instructions without enabling the hardware floating point unit will cause a fault exception if your processor doesn't support hardware floating point unit then you can use the option soft here specifying soft causes gcc to generate output containing library calls for floating point operations that means floating point operations will use library calls or library in our case let's not use the hardware floating point unit let's just use software library for the floating point operations that's why you have to use this uh, with uh, value soft let's use that let me copy this go to the make file let's just paste here and mention it as soft and here as well in the compiler arguments also you have to mention that save this make file and make clean make we don't have any errors let's connect the board and let's test this application so i'm going to launch one more command prompt here make load let me open my Putty terminal. Let's connect to the OpenOCD. Reset in it. 
flash write image erase final dot elf reset halt here you can see that we met with a hard fault exception so the code is not working properly that is a problem we have to investigate why this exception is happening that i will leave you as a small assignment just think what exactly we did wrong in this procedure i can surely think of one thing the problem could be let's run the object dump minus h final dot elf so here it is in your reset handler function when you are trying to copy data section from flash to sram you consider end of dot text as start of dot data but that will not be true in this case because there are two more sections are getting introduced right after the dot text section that's why end of dot text is not equal to start of dot data you have to take care of this just think about that and uh, try to change the reset handler code where you are trying to copy data section we met with hard fault exception isn't it that is one possible mistake and i explained in the previous lecture that you cannot consider end of text as start of data because these two sections are getting introduced we have to edit our linker script here here let's create one linker script symbol let me call it as load address of data is equal to i can use the command a linker command load addr of data section since this is an initialization you have to end this with a semicolon this is a command this will return the load address of data section let's not use this linker script symbol we have to modify our reset handler as well let's go to the startup file here let's extend that variable underscore l a data after that use this symbol here size here we have to change this flash address instead of e text we have to mention that load address of data that's it rest all will be same let's try this let's test this reset in it flash right reset yes now you can see that our code is executing on the board run halt and you can see that it is in thread mode that's correct no exception successfully tested our code with the c standard library also now in the next lecture let me cover semi hosting we'll use the print app to see our messages on the open ocd console by using the technique semi hosting in this lecture let me cover semi hosting semi hosting is a technique by which we can see the print up messages on the open ocd console to use the semi hosting feature the open ocd should be in connection with the target hardware the open ocd should be running otherwise semi hosting will not work because semi hosting as its name indicates there must be a support of host in this case host is open ocd the printf message will be pulled by the host application that is open ocd and then it is displayed on the open ocd console that's why open ocd must be running and it should be in connection with the target hardware to use semi hosting you just need to change this spec file that's it instead of nano spec what you should be using is let's go to our tool chain you should be using this one rdi monitor dot spec 
remember that when you use nano specs it will use new lib nano this is a new lib nano and when you use this one it will use this one that is lib rdi mon underscore nano that's a standard c library with semi hosting support that's why let's go to our make file and let me not modify this create one more linker flags comment this out let me call this as ld flags underscore semi or sh semi hosting here let me mention this spec and after that here let's duplicate this here let me call it as final underscore sh semi hosting dot ELS. So this is a different target. But uh, when you do make all, this target will not be built because it is not mentioned as the dependencies. Let's create one more target semi. And uh, here, copy and paste this. Instead of final dot ELF, let's build final sh dot elf i hope you get that let's comment this out i don't want to use this ld flex let's use this ld flex here that looks great after that in the main dot c you have to initialize the semi hosting feature that we can do by calling this function initialize monitor handle before using semi hosting you have to call this function from the main that initializes some of the routines or some of the functionality of the semi hosting library that's why you have to call this function from main.c before using any printf i would call right after this and after that you have to extend that function copy this prototype and paste it somewhere here let me place it here remove this this is not required this is semi hosting init function that's it let's do make clean and make semi Oh, I'm sorry. So here we need to do one thing. We met with lots of errors and the error is because we should not link the project with syscalls. Now the library is providing you all the system calls. Remember that. That's the reason we should exclude this file syscalls.c from building. Because now the semi-hosting library is providing all those low-level system calls. That's the reason. Let's go to the make file, remove this syscalls.o and save this, make clean and make semi. No problem, we met with another error, undefined reference to end. What happened here is in the linker script, let's go to the linker script. The semi hosting library doesn't need end, it needs slightly different symbol that is underscore underscore end. Let's make it happy. Create one more symbol underscore underscore end. This is what semi hosting library needs. Let's make semi. Let's test this. Now it is fine. Before testing, let's include a couple of printf statements. In the main, we have one printf statement, that's fine. In the task handler, let me keep another printf statement. Printf task 1 is executing. You can keep more printfs, no problem. I would just keep one here. Another I would keep here. Task 2. And one more I keep here. Task 3. And one more I keep here, task 4. And please make sure that the printf ends with slash n. That is very important for semi-hosting. 
that's how semi hosting host that is open OCD comes to know that that is a full message that will be taken as a marker to mark the end of message that's why slash n is very important make let's make semi and let's go to the terminal here first let's do reset in it after that let's flash final underscore semi dot elf sorry that is not semi underscore sh dot elf and now first you have to enable the semi hosting feature in the open OCD. for that you have to execute the command arm semi hosting enable here you can see that semi hosting is enabled after that we have to run just reset here you can see that we are getting the prints isn't it that's about semi hosting try to reproduce this at your desk and let me know if you face any issues now to end this application what you can do is you can just send the command halt execution stops at the target and you can also see that semi hosting is active if you want to terminate open ocd then you can send the command shutdown when you send shutdown the open ocd will get disconnected from the debug adapter or from the target that's about uh, writing bare metal embedded application from scratch i hope you enjoyed these uh, lecture series and uh, let me know if you face any issues you can ask your questions or doubts in the course q and a forum